Hello again, this is Paradox. Do you like plane crashes? Well, if not, there's a solution for that. This is the Zonai battery and its older brother, the Big Zonai battery. They store energy. How much energy? Well, let's get into it. First, before we get too deep into things, if you haven't already, watch this video now. Seriously, you will probably not understand the rest of this if you haven't seen this video first. I promise it'll make you smarter. For everyone else, let's continue where we left off. Okay, now that all of the energy scrubs are gone, the small battery contains 4.5 wells and the big battery contains 63 wells. This means that one big battery contains the same energy as 14 small ones. If you use autobuild to construct them, the small battery costs 9 zonite and the large one costs 100. This makes the large battery more efficient in terms of wells per zonite, but it's really worth considering if you need all of that energy. Most applications don't. Once you've fully upgraded Link's energy cell, you can also buy these parts with crystallized charges. The small one costs 3 charges, and the big one costs 30. Okay, now with all the information on the table, let's actually talk about how the game uses these batteries. From what I've seen, if your vehicle has multiple batteries, the game chooses a battery to deplete and won't deplete from a fresh one until the old one is completely drained and disappears. Following this pattern, the game will completely deplete all batteries connected to a vehicle before it begins depleting Link's energy cell. With a couple of exceptions that I'll get into later, each device depletes a battery at the same rate that it depletes Link's energy cell. Combination rules also remain unchanged. However, as much as the energy cell and the batteries have in common, there is one key difference between the two of them. You see, battery depletion does not benefit in any way from Link wearing Zonite armor. For the purpose of our calculations, we will use each device's base depletion rate without any armor multipliers as long as it's drawn from a battery. I tested this using the same procedures that I used for ZR1, and I've also since found this online spreadsheet containing a bunch of data mined values to compare it against. And let me tell you, boy does it feel good seeing data mined values exactly match the ones that you determined experimentally. For those who are curious, I'll go ahead and link that spreadsheet in the description. Now, if that's all you wanted to know, feel free to click off now, but for anyone who is interested, there is much more to these batteries than meets the eye. First off, let's talk about battery dissolution. As you guys know, each powered Zonai part expires and dissolves at some point. For most parts, they have a hidden durability meter that counts down as the device is used. Most parts last 30 minutes, wings last just long enough to not make it anywhere, and batteries will dissolve the moment they run out of Raru juice. When this happens, if you put the battery in a bad place, it can cause your vehicle to unintentionally disconnect parts. If they are powered, then not only do you lose the use of those parts, but you also lose the potential benefits of their respective combination rules. So, be smart about where you put your batteries. As a general rule, if they're only connected to one thing, then they shouldn't be able to cause any problems for you when they dissolve. Now, if you're running out of space or need to balance the weight and absolutely must connect a battery to two things, connect it to other batteries. The game is smart enough to burn them in the right order where they won't cause problems. Check this out. I built a tree out of batteries. Which one do you think will deplete first when I turn my machine on? If your guess was right here, then congratulations, your battery intuition is correct. If I time lapse this, then as you can see, the game tries to deplete the battery that is furthest away from the main part of the machine, and it always chooses a battery that will not disconnect stuff when it dissolves if possible. Okay, so now that you understand the basics, let's address the one major headache with these things, their interaction with cannons. You see, cannons actually have a different depletion rate when powered by a battery compared to when powered by the energy cell. I don't know why they do, but that's just how it is. Remember how in part 1, we did all of that work to find that the cannon depleted the cell somewhere around 0.29 wells per second? Well, when connected to a battery, their depletion becomes 0.18 wells per second instead. 
What's more, instead of having a staggered, janky depletion pattern like when powered by the cell, from what I can tell, they deplete batteries in a smooth, linear manner like every other device. Despite these changes, they still abide by the standard combination rule. Because of that, our table describing the emitter behavior from ZR1 perfectly describes cannons, but only if they're connected to a battery. This weird discrepancy seems to indicate to me that the cannons were originally planned to be a sort of fifth device in the emitter family. However, as the course of testing went on, they found that it was way too easy to blow up everything around you if it had the same depletion as an emitter, so they made it more expensive when you run it with your energy cell, but they forgot to implement that change when running it from a battery. Or maybe Nintendo knew that I was going to make a calculator and they just wanted to make my life hard. We will never know. But all of that aside, here's the updated canon info. As always, you can pause if you desire. With that problem solved, there is just one more thing to say about the batteries. You see, when you turn on a machine which draws from a battery instead of from the energy cell, the battery starts using energy the moment the weapon connects or when you get on the steering stick. In contrast, when you use your energy cell, there's actually a slight delay between activation and when the energy cell actually begins to deplete. In most cases, you can address this issue by just starting your timing at the appropriate moment, but in the case of rockets connected to batteries, we will bump their lifetime burn from 0.54 to 0.625 to reflect the extra half second or so that they spend burning the battery before dissolving. I needed to restart from scratch, and it took an awful lot of work, but I have finally remade the depletion calculator to reflect these new developments. I felt bad leaving it incomplete. It should now predict just about any vehicle as long as all of your powered Zonai components are constantly on. With that out of the way, there is another thing that I'd like to explore during this video, and that is... Batteries are not the only type of energy storage device in this game. We have one more kind, the Zonai Charges. I want to go ahead and cover these here since they are somewhat related to the batteries and it would be good to cover them all in a single video. First is the Small Charge. When Link eats a small Zonai Charge, it will deposit exactly 0.75 wells into his energy cell. What's more, if the cell is fully charged, you can overcharge it and gain single-use yellow wells by eating Zonai charges. You can do this up to 12 times for a grand total of 9 yellow wells. These wells work pretty much the same way as yellow stamina. They will not be depleted by anything until Link runs out of green energy wells, at which point it'll start tapping into the yellow ones. I rarely use this feature. Honestly, Zonai charges are much better spent at device dispensers. If you go to this dispenser near the Ego Shon Shrine under the Water Temple, you can pretty reliably get anywhere between 2 to 4 batteries just by depositing 5 charges at a time, and if you do the math, this is a much better use of your charges than eating them. However, there is one niche yet legitimate use case to eating charges that I have not seen reported elsewhere. As we know, if you for some reason fully deplete your energy cell, it takes 21 seconds to fully recharge and is unusable during that time. However, you can interrupt this process by eating a single charge, at which point you can use your energy cell again before it's fully recovered. I'm not really sure how useful this is, again, it's somewhat more of a situational mechanic, but I did think that I should let you guys know about it. Anyway, next we have the Big Zonai Charge, and this one is pretty simple. When Link eats one of these, not only does it fully recharge the energy cell, but it will also prevent Link from using any energy whatsoever for the next 30 seconds. During this time, you can do whatever you want without the energy cell budging in the slightest. It even stops batteries from depleting, which is pretty nice. And so, when you think about it, the best time to use one of these would be right before your cell fully depletes, as if you do that, you can benefit from both the full recharge and the boost time to deliver maximum carnage. Putting all of this together, here's an info card that contains everything that I know that I feel is relevant in terms of how these charges affect your energy cell. So, with all of that out of the way, I have just one more device which can recharge your energy cell. But this one may be a bit more of a surprise. 
Yup, that's right. You can completely recharge your energy cell by cooking stuff. This gives us another use for portable pots. I like to call it the chef reset. Admittedly, it's probably less useful than recall cycling and quite a bit harder to set up and do, but I do think it looks way cooler and it's a kind of fun way to use portable pots which you don't have many other uses for. And I think that's about it for now. This one was a bit shorter, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you want, I plan on measuring the depletion rates of things like fused weapons and Minoru at some point in the future, so you can stick around if you like videos like this and you'll see that in a potential part 3 or 4 down the road. However, before that, I do have some other projects that I'd like to get started on, so it'll take some time. Until then, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.